Hey guys, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics, and today's video I want to talk to you all about how this all got started. I made this YouTube channel in order to help more people get into the sport of combat robotics and provide the information needed to get started more easily. But with my subscriber count slowly creeping up on 500, and having started this channel back in September of 2019, I realized I haven't ever talked about how I myself got started. I think my story may resonate with many young aspiring engineers and bot builders, so I wanted to share my story and tell everyone how Team Just Cause Robotics came to be. I just quickly want to mention that the best way to help spread the love of this sport is to play the YouTube algorithm game. By commenting, liking, subscribing, and sharing videos that I, myself, and other Combat Robotics YouTube channels produce, you can raise the chances that the algorithm suggests these videos to more and more people who may not have even heard of the sport before, or are only familiar with BattleBots or Robot Wars on TV, and had no idea that you can start smaller. Once again, I don't earn any money at all from making these videos, and I can't even run ads until I meet a 1000 subscriber threshold, among other metrics. I'm hoping that one day this may change, but for now I make these videos purely for the good of the sport. So now, how it all got started. My journey into combat robots, like with most builders, started by watching BattleBots on TV. My interest really started growing with the Discovery Channel reboot in 2015. I was mostly just interested as a spectator, but in high school and middle school, I had dabbled with a variety of hobby electronics and even robotics projects through a competition called Science Olympiad, and I knew I was really most interested in robots. Here are some videos and photos of a few projects I worked on in high school. My senior project was this robot I made which could function either as an absolutely garbage RC car or as an Arduino powered obstacle avoiding robot with a Bluetooth module to take smartphone commands. The mechanical assembly was a little bit sad given I only had access to basic hand tools in my basement to make it, but it worked. Upon seeing the reboot of BattleBots on Discovery, I began to follow the sport closely. In part, watching BattleBots helped to motivate me to pursue mechanical engineering, so when applying for college, I specifically chose a bunch of engineering schools and ultimately I got into the mechanical engineering program at the University of Rochester. However, it wasn't until I actually met a competitor that I really got motivated to start building on my own. College. In college, I started out with the usual engineering clubs available to me. The Robotics Club, which at the time of my freshman year didn't do anything, and Solar Splash, a solar boat racing club. This was actually what really got me more involved in building things. I was with Solar Splash, I got to learn about really high power electronic systems, utilizing the same sorts of motors and controllers that heavyweight BattleBots use. Here are some clips of a Craftsman riding mower that we converted to electric as practice for doing a gas motor swap on a gas-powered outboard motor. That was around December of 2015. I also engaged in a few more just for fun projects to challenge myself and learn more about electronics and robotics. Here are some pics of a little kit bot I used as an Arduino rover platform. Originally, I made another phone Bluetooth control system for it in November 2015, but later it turned into an obstacle avoidance bot with an Arduino and an ultrasonic sensor. Fast forwarding a bit and skipping over a few other things I did, it was in late 2017 that I met Daniel, who would help me to really get involved with combat robotics. Question, right? You can build a wide variety of things in order to accomplish the objective of fighting and other people can build the same as that. So you have, you have so many creative options, creative and destructive options, and you, whatever you build, it gets tested out to the max by the other people who might be there. It was around October or November 2017 that I met Daniel, while I was a junior and he a sophomore at UR, both in mechanical engineering. He had actually competed at RoboGames and was originally from California, and we met at a club meeting and immediately hit it off. He mentioned he knew about Motorama here on the East Coast and would love to build a 30 pound featherweight bot to compete there, since he had previously built a not so great 60 pound lightweight for Robo Games. I said I was down, and since I'd saved up some money working as a teaching assistant, I could afford some parts. So I started working on the design with him. This was how my first ever combat robot, Karma, was born. Team Death by Design. I spent countless hours in CAD designing and redesigning, with us going back and forth on various choices. Eventually, we settled on this extremely basic steel box design with a linear actuator-powered lifting arm capable of lifting well over 200 pounds. Mind you, I was still learning a bit about RC electronics at this point, so the component choice wasn't amazing, but it was a bot. Through the process of building this bot, I got a lot more practice using the shop equipment I'd learned during my first year at U of R. I also began familiarizing myself with the CNC world courtesy of a CNC router parts CNC router kit we had on hand. That router only worked with plastic and wood though for the most part as it wasn't rigid enough to cut metal, so there was a lot of band sawing and bridge port milling involved. We ended up using a fairly combat bot standard BaneBots 775 motor with P60 gearbox and a BotBits 30 amp ESC for drive, 
with the weapon running 6S LiPo pack down to 12 volts with a converter, then through a Hobbywing Quick Run ESC to one run the weapon actuator. It was really painfully slow and overpowered, unfortunately, but electrically bulletproof. Motorama 2018 rolled around in February, and we finished the bot with plenty of time to spare, the morning of the event at 7am in the hotel parking lot. I had managed to rope another friend named Catherine into the sport by this time, so the three of us went as a team representing the University of Rochester Combat Robotics team, which I had at the last minute decided to name Team Death by Design when I found out that we needed a name for BuildersDB. Karma surprised me by not being total trash, and actually won its first fight ever against Multibot's Mouse and Trap, who thankfully were built non-invertible. Daniel drove in three of Karma's four fights. I drove it in its second fight, which was against the devastating undercutter Rat Catcher, which quickly sheared off a bunch of bolts under the robot and ripped open the corners. I was filming fights on my phone, so I have no video of this fight, sadly, but it was bad. Being this was my only combat robot driving experience to date, that wasn't amazing. Still, Karma beat another barely working bot, and then lost its tournament run to none other than Jameson Go's Megatron. He backflipped the bot and punched a hole straight through the base plate, an inch from the unprotected lipo. Oops. I still had the time of my life at the event, and was hooked on combat robots from this point onwards. Conduit and Top Kill After this, I went on in the next year to design two new robots, basically doing all of the design work for a 30-pound Sportsman 360 lifter bot Conduit, named as an homage to Breaker Box and a beetleweight overhead sawbot named Topkill. Topkill became Daniel's pet project, and he did some of the CAD for it and most of the concept work and component choices, while I took ownership of Conduit. Still, since I had started learning CAD in high school due to the donation of a 3D printer to my Science Olympiad team, I did most of the design work even for Topkill until the last month or so before Motorama 2019. At Motorama, I was driving Conduit in all of its fights, while Daniel drove Topkill. Sadly, the lifter design I made for Conduit was a bit ambitious, and the clutch mechanism I designed failed in its first fight. Plus, I managed to blow up a drive motor due to no ventilation. I locked the clutch for its next fight, and the lifter didn't break, but it was basically performing just like Duck 2019, filling about without maintaining any control whatsoever. And I happened to get matched against the Best Driver Award winning Diceratops, and then the overall runner-up La Machine, an absolute beast of a control bot. Despite these losses, I still had a blast, and towards the end I got to help Jonathan Schultz repair 30 pound huge, which was an amazing experience for me working with someone I knew as a star from the TV show. Thanks, Jonathan! From here on out, we made a few improvements to Top Kill for the Fall Sword competition in September of 2019, and fought it there. And I roped a few others into the combat robotics team that Daniel and I had begun, which to this day is still going strong. Sword was a lot of fun, and Top Kill won the coolest bot award by wowing spectators while performing admirably. Graduation. Back around February of 2019, during an arduous job search, I'd gotten a job offer out in the suburbs of Boston to work as a mechanical engineer in research and development, which I'm still doing now. The rest of my story is all from May 2019 onwards. I graduated with my degree, drove out with all of my stuff from Rochester, Massachusetts the day after graduating and four days after getting my driver's license, and began a short apartment search which led me to finding a place in Framingham where I live today. I was watching the latest third season of BattleBots airing, and saw that Team Valkyrie was hosting launch parties up in Boston, so I attended a few of those. I was already thinking I wanted to keep building combat bots, but having just spent all of my money on a security deposit for a month's rent and furnishings, I thought it was a bit early. In June and July, I'd been cooking up some design plans for a bot with the working name Travesty, with a very large vertical spinner. I got introduced to some builders at these watch parties, most notably Team Ribot Captain David Jin, who let me know about the Norwalk Havoc event, and pushed me to get my bot built and compete in the August Norwalk Havoc competition. At this time, I had about one month to finish my CAD, buy all of the parts, and assemble the bot. This is going to be nuts, I thought, but I went for it. Also around this time, I attended a talk that was given by Team Valkyrie about their BattleBots competition run, and I ended up by pure accident running into Team Captain Justin Marple from Bloodsport, which is how I ended up joining the BattleBots team. Division version 1 I spent just about all of my meager savings buying a Sidewinder X1 3D printer, all of the parts and metal that I needed for the first robot. The first box of parts arrived July 11th, 2019. The competition date? August 10th, 2019. I got a Makerspace membership at the Framingham Makerspace, learned to use the ShopBot CNC router and the Tormach. I CNC milled the base plate and uprights myself, but the AR500 weapons and belt side or rear armor I had laser cut. Every other part I 3D printed or was off the shelf. After weeks of frantic building and testing, which is very unsafe mind you, never do this, I drove up to Norwalk with my girlfriend at the time, with an as of yet unnamed bot finished at 1am the night before the competition. 
in the car on the drive, I decided to come up with a better name than Travesty, as it didn't seem very threatening. I also wanted to make a more obvious homage to the bot's inspiration, Deep Six. Seeking a mathematical or numerical name, we all know what I settled on. Division version 1 was born. The rest is history, and all can be seen from the backlog of videos on this channel. Between version 1 and version 2, I created this YouTube channel and uploaded videos from version 1's fights. That was the start of all that you've seen up till now. Originally, this YouTube channel was just a place to show off my fights and build videos. However, it quickly became much more than that. My passion for this sport grew by seeing how helpful other channels like Robert Cowan and Team Panic make tutorials and in-depth overviews, and how helpful that sort of stuff is to those just starting out. I wanted to make some of those kinds of videos myself. My love of this sport has fed into a love of robotics in general, and I hope one day to be working in a position where I am directly designing or building robots every day. How to get started For those of you looking to get started with combat robotics, start small. I highly recommend finding a local antweight or beetleweight event when those start up again, and attending it to see what the smaller weight classes are like, and what you might be getting into. Watch fight videos and event reports, like those on my channel and others. Norwalk Havoc, Motorama, etc. Read the rules for your local events. After that, if you want to build your own bot, join the Combat Robotics Facebook page linked below, where a ton of experienced builders will happily answer your questions. If you're a university student like I was, talk to your robotics club advisor or similar, find an engineering department head or some other department head, and ask about getting funding to start a team. I ended up being able to get travel expenses covered for a weekend Motorama trip, but that was still close to $1,000. Though we did have to pay for all the robot parts out of pocket. If there is an open workshop or makerspace at your university, like Retner at the University of Rochester, take whatever safety course you need to gain access and learn to use the equipment, especially a milling machine, lathe, 3D printer, CNC machine, laser cutter, and the like. If you're already an adult out on your own, get a 3D printer and take a look at the existing designs on Thingiverse and elsewhere. But most of all, make sure to watch some fights, learn from others' mistakes and your own, and have fun. That's all I have for you today! Make sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell if you want to see more of these videos in the future. And if you really loved this, share it with your friends. And as always, thanks for watching.